Bristol Myers has been hammered down 27% over the last 12 months. It currently trades towards its 52-week low. And when we take a look at the forward yield at 4.7%, it is starting to look attractive. So is this one of the most undervalued stocks in the current market? Let's find out if you should be adding this to your portfolio. As always, we're going to do a deep dive on this company. We're going to see how their top line revenue has increased over the last few years, as well as their bottom line net income. We're going to revisit the health of this company, their total cash versus their total debt. And we want to see how well or how poorly, in fact, they are performing versus some of their competitors over the last few years. And as always, importantly, we're going to analyze their dividend safety. We want to see the supporting metrics, the free cash flows, the net debt to EBITDAs to understand if this truly is a strong contender for the future in your portfolio. And a few things we're going to look at today is their fourth quarter and their full year highlights, as well as understanding their guidance. Are they seeing any growth over the next year? And what is quite important is with these companies, we want to take a look and analyze their pipeline over the next few years. What do they have in phase one, phase two, phase three? Is there anything that we can get excited about that can help their top line revenue grow? And as always, we will run it through the valuation model. We want to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety. And we'll look towards Wall Street to see what they're forecasting over the next 12 months. So let's dive straight in. Bristol Myers Squibb down 27% over the last 12 months. Over the last five years, up only 9%. Bear in mind, this doesn't include those dividends reinvested. And over the last 10 years, a very similar performance. Very poor, in my opinion, plus 5%. This isn't something you want from a company over a 10-year period. But let's find out if now we are seeing it at a truly valuable point. And we can see all-time highs sitting there around that $81 mark in November 2022. And it does have a forward yield of 4.7%. So that is a fairly nice starting yield. So let's understand if this is one we should consider. Top line revenue, what we want to see here is at least 3 to 7% growth year on year. And what we note from 10 years ago, they reported 16 billion on their top line. Nice to note they have nearly three times increased that into their latest annual report, 45 billion. And when we look at it in terms of the form, we can see it is moving in the di direction over the longer term. But again, something that we do need to consider is that if there will be any movement over the last few years in terms of growth, we can see. From December 2021, it hasn't really moved much. In fact, it has decreased from 46.4 billion to 45 billion. So we need to understand whether or not there are any drivers for growth over the foreseeable future. In terms of the bottom line net income, what can we see here? 2 billion reported in December 2014, 8 billion in their latest annual report. So they've managed to four times increase their bottom line whilst increasing their top line by three times. So overall, it does look fairly positive. Although when we do look at the net income graph, we can see very inconsistent year on year. We see the net loss in December 2020, but it has pulled back since then. But we aren't seeing a massive amount of movement. So again, similar to the top line, we need to understand is there going to be growth for this company in the future? Or is this one that when we do take a look at the last 10 years, are we expecting Expecting to see this growth over the next 10 years as well. Now, a few other things that we want to take a look at quickly is their return performance over the last year. So companies in the pharmaceutical industry, we have GSK, Zoetis, which we did in fact review a few days ago, look like a very solid company, as well as a few other well-known, including Pfizer. Over the last year, Including those dividends reinvested, it would be one of the worst performing. We have Bristol Myers Squig negative 23%, only better than Pfizer, which has gone through a much worse period. When we extend that to the last five years, we see that BMI is up 30% or just under, making it in the middle of these performers. Not the greatest return over the last five years, in all honesty. When we expand that to the last 10 years, again, 41%. If you have been reinvesting those dividends, it does bring it into one of the worst performers over this period in line with Pfizer. So what I would say and what is quite important to understand is that past performance is not an indicator of future performance, but do understand that it hasn't had the greatest historical period. Now, when we take a look at some other metrics, which is quite key to understand this company as a whole, 
we can see it hasn't had the greatest period. If we just select a few of these, year-on-year -year revenue growth, negative 2.5%. This is a lot worse than the sector median coming in at 6.5%, hence the C- minus rating. In fact, they get an overall C- plus on growth. Revenue forward-looking, not very much growth. In fact, pretty much flat whilst the sector is expecting over 9%. And we can see the same is to be said on both the EBITDA year on year growth as well as forward looking. Overall, it just isn't looking that positive, but we do need to understand the numbers further. In terms of earnings per share, we can see a lot better than the sector and coming in at some very strong double digit numbers. So some mixed numbers here, which we will take through to the end of this episode to understand whether or not this is undervalued and worth your time. Now, in terms of profitability, however, they do get an A-plus rating. We can see very strong gross profit margin, 77% above the sector median of 57. And in terms of other margins, when we look at the EBIT margin as well as the net income, they are performing very well. So this is also important to understand. Margins are important when we are looking at companies. We, at the end of the day, do want them to turn a profit and give shareholder a lot of value. Now, one of the things that we do like to look at is institutional ownership. It currently sits at 76.41%. Now, we do see around $9.44 billion worth of sales by the institutions over the last 12 months, but we see a significant amount more buying, in fact, five times over the same period. Now, when we look at the more recent quarter, again, we don't have the full set of data, but so far we do see more selling than buying, 7.31 million versus 3 million worth of buys. But we do note over the last 12 months, on average, as shown above, institutions are liking Bristol Myers and are adding more to their portfolio. But remember, always do your own due diligence and don't just copy what these institutions are doing. Now, in terms of insider ownership, 0.09%, we see a lot more selling. In fact, 4.53 million worth of sales versus around 672,000 worth of buys. When we take a look, Q1 and Q2, no data available yet. Q4, so in fact, the more recent period, we see a fair amount of buying. We can take a look to understand who these insiders are. And in actual fact, we see that the CEO, although we are talking at the back end of last year, did buy a number of shares totaling just over $250,000. But we can also see here, in fact, at the beginning of January, two US Congress members did sell a number of shares. So whilst it is a bullish sign that we do see here that insiders have been buying 630,000 shares, we can see over the last 12 months in total a lot more selling than there is buying. So before we jump into the dividend safety and the metrics, let's take a quick look at their fourth quarter and four year highlights. So what we can note over the last year, they did bring in around 45 billion worth of sales, which we discussed. Now, the important thing that I want to highlight here is the non-GAAP earnings per share of $7.51. The reason for this is because in their 2024 guidance, what they are expecting in terms of their top line growth is low single digit increases. So don't expect a lot when they are releasing their FY24 numbers. They're not expecting a massive year. And interestingly, on top of that, they are expecting the earnings per share in this year to be lower, a range of 7.1 to 7.4 than what they did bring in in the last full year. So not much growth and also the earnings per share is expected to be lower. Now, that isn't a massive red flag. You have to understand that this company has been pummeled over the last year down 27 cent. What we need to understand is if it is now worth around $51 and this is looking at some very strong value territory. Now, what I always like to do with these companies is have a quick look at their pipeline. Now, they have over 45 compounds in development and they have over 40 different disease areas being studied. Now, what we typically like to do, there's phase one, phase two, phase three. Obviously, the further the phase along is, that means it is nearer to being completed and brought into circulation. However, even phase three need to be approved. What we can see with those that are essentially at a nearer level of being approved with the phase three, there are quite a number. We're looking at different areas. So we have solid tumors, carcinoma, bladder, renal cell carcinoma, and a few others. So there are a lot that they have in their pipeline. Now, this isn't my expertise. This isn't my field. But it does go to show that Bristol Myers Squibb are still looking to bring out new products into the market to help cure quite a large number of diseases. So this is a positive sign. Again, as always, this isn't my specified area, but this is something that I do like to just brush over just to ensure that these companies do have a different products coming in to cure different diseases. 
Now, when we do take a look at the metrics, we do just want to let you first know that we have released our latest free weekly article. In this, we do run through 10 undervalued dividend stocks based on dividend yield theory. Now, completely free, if you want to sign up and read any of these articles, complete instant access, do click on that pinned comment below and you can start reading straight away. Now, dividend safety score does come in at 70. It does look to be safe. Market cap, 104 billion. It is a mega cap company. Now, when we take a look at essentially the recessionary metrics, what we do know is that in the last recession, they didn't increase the dividend, but they also didn't cut it. They maintained it. They had below average growth at negative 20%. But remember, the S&P came in at negative 12. Nonetheless, they still outperformed the S&P with their negative 32% return. S&P bringing in negative 55 Dividend growth, I'll be honest, I am fairly impressed for this company. They have had a hard time, but we can see in December they did increase that dividend by 5.3%. That is above the minimum 4% inflation rate that we advocate on the channel. And over the last five years, 7% looking very healthy, at least at a bare minimum over the last 20 years, whilst picking up a fairly nice yield. They have been increasing those dividends at 4% in line with inflation. And not only have they been increasing the dividends for the last 17 years, but they have been paying a dividend for the last 53 without a reduction. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, we can see our first sign of undervaluation as it states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. In fact, a double undervaluation signal given the forward P is also below the five-year average and a triple sign with healthcare sector P being much higher at 16.4%. But do bear in mind, keep in your mind, in fact, that we don't look at any of these models in isolation and we do conclude towards the end. We then look at the free cash flow payout. Personally, this is one I do focus on. You can see the earnings, though, if you want to on the left. Below 50% for biotechs if you want to be industry specific. My personal view, below 60%. Different investors will use different numbers. Now, since 2018, it has been pretty much below 50% every single year. 2024 expected to go even lower at 33%. So no real worries based on that dividend when we do look at the power ratio. Nice to know, in fact, the free cash flow per share has grown by nearly four times over the longer period. Now, it is inconsistent, but what I do like to see here are those increases. It is moving in the right direction. Even when it does drop, like we saw in 2022, it is picked up into 23 and is expected to increase again in 2024. When we look at the sales growth, now we do want to see steady moderate growth of 3 to 7%. And we do know 2022 was flat. 2023 is negative 2%. 2024, as they did say, they are expecting very low single-digit increases. So it isn't the fastest growing company. Again, factor that into your investment thesis. Factor that into your margin of safety as well when we come to the valuation process. Now... Total sales, we already ran through, but you can see a different format here. Shares outstanding, a bit of a shame. What we love to see is when companies do share buybacks, essentially returning excess cash. What we see with Bristol Myers Squibb is, in fact, they have diluted your position over the last 10 years. Something just to bear in mind. It isn't the worst. Typically, when you see companies perform very well, their share price is very strong over the last 10 years. But unfortunately, with BMI, share price hasn't moved much over the last 10 years. Plus, they have diluted your position. ROIC, I want to see 10% or more. Biotechs, you can look at 25%. For me, though, this is acceptable. The last three years, around the 10 to 13%. Personally, that gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And we can see from 2014 to 2018, it was a lot better. Hopefully, we can see it go back up to those high levels that we saw in the distant future. In terms of the margins, well, we want to see at least 25% for biotechs. They have been straddling around that for a fair portion of the last 10 years. Whilst it is lower in 2023, something just to keep an eye on, we don't want it to go back down to the 2020 level of 8%. But again, this is acceptable for the time being. In terms of the free cash flow margin, no real worries there. Since 2017, it has been at the 20% or higher level. So there's a positive and something that is attractive for potential investors or those current investors. Now, the net debt to EBITDA metric, what this essentially is, shows us the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization, the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt and net of cash on hand. Now, we can see in 2023, 1.63. Now, what we are looking for is around 1.5 or lower, so it isn't the worst. 2024 expected around that at 1.6, and this gives us safety that the dividend is going to be secure and that the balance sheet is strong. So again, no real worries. Combine that with the free cash flow payout that was around the mid-30s last year and expected next year, the dividend does look to be safe. 
So jumping into the valuation model, and as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So the first model, Graham's valuation, Earnings per share at just under $4. We have the long-term growth rate with the AAA corporate bond yield. And we get an intrinsic value with our first signal of undervaluation, $56.84 with the market value around 51. Again, bear in mind, we don't look and value any of these purely on one model. We then have the multiple valuation model companies in a similar sector and size. Their average PE multiplied by the EPS of BMY to get an intrinsic value showing some significant undervaluation at an intrinsic price of $80.74. We then have the dividend discount model. We can see some fairly nice increases over the specified period. On average at 8% forward looking, we have gone 4.25, so a lot more conservative. And we get our third undervaluation signal. We then move on to the DCF model. We have the free cash flow year on year. Average growth at just under 30%. We have gone very conservative. In fact, gone negative 2%. Bear in mind with this as well, it's lower than management estimates as well as lower analyst targets. In conjunction with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash subtract total debt, get the equity value, divide by shares outstanding. And we get to our undervaluation signal with an intrinsic price of just under $70. Now, the intrinsic value is just the average of these four models. Today's price of Bristol Myers Squibb comes to $68.54. Remember that you can grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list by clicking on the pinned comment below. So margin of safety, as always, we do start off with 10% and we use that, execute on that if we believe it meets three criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. If you believe that for BMY, acceptable buy price is $61.68. And then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And we can see for today's episode, it is pretty much around a 25% MOS level. Now, Wall Street, what are they forecasting? Well, they see some nice upside over the next 12 months. They believe this is a strong buy. They have a price forecast of $61.12 and believe that it will increase by 20% over the period. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Is Bristol Myers one you're looking to add? Maybe one that you're considering on the watch list? It does look fairly undervalued, but again, it does depend whether or not this does have a place in your portfolio. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.